Hello and welcome back to the channel. As always, I'd like to thank those of you who have liked the videos and have subscribed to the channel and leaving comments. Thank you very much. I'll keep making the videos if you keep watching them. Also, a huge shout out to my good friends, Julie, Carl, Luke and Craig at Vector Air, who have kindly lent me this rifle to review. This is my follow-up video on the Calibre Gun Cricket 2 Tactical with the carbon fibre stock in 177. Now, Vector Air were kind enough to lend me a couple of other peripherals as part of a kit so I could do the testing. They lent me a Vector Veyron 6 24 x 44 IR scope. They didn't know that this is one of my favourite 6 24 x 44 scopes. Also, they lent me a Huggett Atom moderator along with a Apollo Sniper bipod, which has a very Akitak feel to it. Now, I'm just going to spend this video just going over a couple of things that I really really liked about the rifle and also just a couple of I suppose niggles that I've noticed from using it and I will also show you some chrono results and also some accuracy testing when I've shot this using the Caldwell Precision Shooting Rest and also shooting it in this particular form using the bipod, using the moderator um, but at the back section I used a combination of some of the shots I've used just with my um, sniper's fist uh, resting the rifle on and subsequently I've also used one of the bags at the range where I did my testing so again thank you very much shout out to Becky and Steve and all of the um, crew at Atherton Indoor Range thank you very much um, but I'll talk about that shortly for now what are the things I like about this rifle first and foremost the stock in this particular format the Carbon fibre stock is one of my favourites, to be fair. I, I, I did think this would happen, and it's true. I have fallen in love with the stock because it looks amazing, tactical. It's it's very, very tactile, even though, when I say tactile, it's got a lovely, smooth finish to it. Um, on top of that, I like the fact that there's rigidity, reinforcement built in so that you can use this within the context of a bag or the sniper's fist like I mentioned. I like the fact that there's cutouts here aka like the previous cricket so you can store your magazines but just also the shooting position on the grip has got a really nice palm swell for my hand anyway not too big not too small it felt just right very gold locks in that respect. Another thing that I really liked about the rifle is over here at the back end when you cock the cocking lever which you do get used to albeit it is rigid and there are these predefined stages there's that but notice that there is a little bit of rigidity there which could do with some uh, attention and also i noticed when you cock the rifle back i don't know if you can see on camera but there's a spring which is exposed and myself and uh my friend at the range, Steve, were wondering, what, what is that spring? Uh, with it being exposed, could that not in time cause issues, especially if you're using this as a hunting rifle out in the field? Anyway, that aside, the, the feature I liked associated with that is this. This little protrusion uh, of red on this probe, illustrating that the rifle is essentially cocked, ready to go. So I'm just gonna put it home and fire the rifle. I liked also, having gotten used to it, the defined stages, first stage, second stage. And you get used to the definition between the stages, the travel between the first stage and the second stage. That's something that you can get used to. Um, I thought this was a niggle. Again, I'll, I'll come to my major niggle, my major gripe with this. Um, I wish manometers weren't put on a side like that and they were essentially positioned in a way that was, I suppose, parallel with the rest of the rifle. I've mentioned this on some of my other videos and I've seen other um, videos where um, YouTubers have adjusted these. can be done, but I just wish the manufacturers would in some way, shape or form try and deal with that over there. Also, I like the carbon bottle over here. A, a, the appropriate size as well the fact that you can fill it up to about 300 bar although i was filling up to about a maximum about 220 when i was shooting it and i was getting a fair amount of shots um i like the fact that the essential the barrel was relatively easy to um unscrew when it came to test uh cleaning i'll do it now just very quickly with the moderator attached and essentially 
off it comes. There you go. And that was easy for cleaning purposes. I'll just put this back on. And whilst I'm talk whilst I'm doing that, I th something else I really liked was the MOA on the Picatinny. Just come on, screw it back on there. Nearly on. There we go. Okay, what didn't I like? Or let's just say what was an issue. For me, it's this loading these circular magazines into this. Now, first of all, you had to get used to this essential uh, switch, which you had to push all the way back so you could put this in. And then when you put this in, I found that periodically when I was pushing it in, I had to put my other hand over here. Let me see if I can show you what I mean. Um, cock the rifle, push this switch back, and then load the magazine. Now, I had to put my other hand here like this so that it wouldn't, the magazine, get pushed through to the other side, which easily could be done. Now, and then you had to push the switch back. Now, that's all well and good when you do it, but I'll just fire this off. Now, that's all well and good when you do it, but I'll tell you what happened a fair few times. When it came to unloading this, and essentially putting the switch back, cocking the rifle back and then pushing this out, it would sometimes fly out whichever direction you pushed from. So if you push from the left, it would fly to the right and vice versa. Now that's easily remedied, which I've seen. There are 3D printed parts that you can get, which are like shelves, which act as a, a rest over here. So if you're, and this is an ambidextrous rifle. So if you wanna load it from the right in, you can do that and then the shelf, uh, 3D printed shelf will hold the magazine in place like that. Now I've seen, I've seen um, that is available. Those 3D printed parts are available on the internet for you to, to purchase. Or if you're lucky enough to have a 3D printer, you can do that yourself, which is great. Um, for me, that was, I suppose, the, the major, the niggle, the, the fact that the magazines periodically flew out depending on which way you you pushed um once that cocking lever was back oh once the cocking lever was cocked sorry and this switch was back the magazines were relatively loose in there and they would have a tendency to come out quite easily um so be warned on that um i suppose the the other foible that i had was the um over here I don't know if you can see the safety. Again, the understanding of what is safe, what isn't safe, push, push in, push out. The fact that there's always red there, that's something to be mindful of because it can be a little bit confusing. I suppose the other thing I noticed, and this is something that's interesting, is that when I shot this off my Caldwell Precision Shooting Rest, I noticed that the point of impact would shift with each shot because there is a slight jump to it. But when I shot off the bipod, that that jump or that recoil, for want of a better word, wasn't as prominent. It was still there, but it wasn't as prominent. And the point of impact wasn't shifting as much or I wasn't having to compensate the rifle as much. So... That's something to something to consider. Now, whilst we're talking about shooting, what 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 did we think? I mean, from my perspective, what did I think um, of the consistency? Now, I, I was able to chrono this. I'll be only for twenty eight shots, but it, the, this rifle was shooting very very consistently at I suppose roughly at around eleven point five foot pounds per second i haven't got the feet per second but in terms of power it was shooting at 11.5 consistently with a standard deviation of 0.1 so there was very very minimal spread spread of about 0.5 um so from a testing perspective and looking at how consistent is the 
regulator with this rifle. It's consistent. It's it, it's great. Now, what about the killer question about accuracy? Well, let's start off. Now, here are my first test sheets, okay? Now, I did this at 30 yards using JSB Exacts, one point, uh, JSB Exacts 8.44 grain, 4.52, and it was at 200 bar. And I shot this to 150 bar. Now, considering that, in fairness, I'd literally just cleaned the barrel and I'm shooting, if you have a look at this, from right through to left, like this, all of these at 30 that you would expect from a caliber gun. Uh, hooray, a 5P piece. All of them. Now, I'm using the splatter side, but just to show you as an example, the top five row. And the rest of them are, apart from maybe one group, where I know, I think I pulled that shot, are all 5P pieces. So I've got my 5P over here just to show you. There's five. That's a five. That one's a five. That's definitely a five. They are pretty much raggedy hole, 5P piece at 30 yards. As I said, even that one there, yeah, even that one there is five PPs, which is great. So, fortunately, uh, I, I was able to um, get a second thought on this. So, my friend Steve was there with his daughter, Chinita, who got, who's got a 272 on the uh, bull run. I can't believe it. She, well, she's a crack shot. Um, and... She was able to have a go with the rifle, and she gave me her thoughts on it. What do you think? Is it light? Uh, it's incredibly light and quite stable. I think the position is very nice, to be honest, on my shoulder. But... Brilliant. And from my perspective, I was really impressed with the level of shooting that she was doing. I've got a card here where she did a 14-shot group with one mag. And again... At 30 yards, 5p piece. And then Steve had a go. I'd say it's a bit more ragged. Not as good as your daughter, Steve. 5p piece. Apart from maybe that one there. Now, this was shooting off the Caldwell Precision Shooting Rest. Okay? That one and that one. I also did one of my own. I have to show these off, obviously. With the 4.52s, again, 5Ps all the way at 30 yards. Following week, I did another test, different pellets. Okay, so JSB Exacts 4.51s. Notice there was a slight opening up of the group over here, but that was me. And again, I forgot to mention this entire card is shooting with this setup, basically, and using um, some of the shots we're using a sniper's fist. Basically, I was resting my palm underneath the rear end of the rifle, and also um, I was using uh, one of the club's uh, rear rest bags. Um, and I, I went like this and shot it essentially in this order. So for me, this was the first group where I was trying to find the zero. And once I did that, I was starting to tighten up the groups a little bit more. And I'll just flip it around so you can see. So if you can see, I was going from here, over here, and then the group started tightening up because I was getting used to shooting in, in that way. And then again, I'm getting 5 PPs with this particular setup, which is great. Here's the streamlined, the QIS. 9.56s. Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you there. These two shots over here are zero shots when I was uh, trying to find the point of impact. So I went from here to here to here. Um, but again, oh, look, five, paper, five P pieces with the QISs. So I'll just flip it over and show you again over here. There you go. These are 5P piece groups. 
and the same with the domed. The domed, again, these are 8.48 5 pp's. Whoops, all the way, <laughs> he says, until he's dropped his 5 pp's. So, what do I think of the rifle overall? I'm just going to recover the 5 p before I lose it. Um, because it's my lucky 5 p. Um, I really like the rifle in a nutshell. I think, despite the magazine issue, which is easily remedied with, I know that there's a 3D printed part and Calibre Gun, if you're listening, there's a design, um, easy design um, issue that you can remedy with an additional part that you can attach onto the rifle yourself or give users the option to pick which side they want to, to choose so that the magazine doesn't pop out whenever you load it, I mean unload it, which again, if you think about it, a rifle like this is perfect for hunting for going out in the field it's got a fantastic stock it's fantastic to shoulder it's light if you kit it out in this format with a superb compact scope it is the perfect hunting tool as it stands when i was testing it i was using obviously a combination of accessories just to test the accuracy and you've seen how accurate accurate is and that, in fairness, is with the rifle's barrel hardly having any pellets down it. I've literally cleaned it and shot it and tested its accuracy numerous times. And again, if you give the opportunity for this rifle to have the barrel bedded in, uh, I'm sure you'll get tighter groups than that, especially from my perspective if I was picking and choosing different pellets and I, I, I picked one particular type of pellet, stuck with that particular type of pellet, learned the rifle, learned its particular um, tendencies because every rifle is different. Um, you'd be a crack shot with this. Not to say that you wouldn't be a crack shot when you get this rifle, as I've demonstrated. You get this rifle, clean the barrel and off you go. You're getting fantastic 5P groups at 30 yards straight away. And on top of that, another fact that I really like about I forgot to mention is it's if you've got a compressor, you can fill it up to 300 bar. I wouldn't advise you to do that. I'd take it up to maybe 250, 275 max. But yeah, you can you can you can take this past 220, which is what I'm accustomed to, to 220 max on a lot of the rifles I've got. Um, but uh, from from that perspective, it it. it essentially has a superb shot count so i definitely was able to get between 200 and 100 bar at least near on 200 shots so that will give you some indication that was just from 200 bar to 100 bar so bear that in mind whenever you decide to if you decide to buy one and subsequently how or what level you finish fill it up to but that essentially concludes my overview and or revisit to the caliber gun cricket 2 tactical in the carbon fiber stock in 177 once again thank you very much to my good friends at vector air for loaning me this rifle and they've promised me some exciting new rifles down the pipe that i'll be able to test and uh, i'm looking forward to it especially uh, having had uh, a recent conversation and also seeing the some of the new rifles that are coming our way uh, this side of the UK from a combination of Europe and the States. So exciting times ahead. But for now, thank you very much. Look after yourselves, stay safe, and I will see you all very, very soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.